Hi folks, it's February 22nd, 2020. Uh, I'm trying to move things around a little bit. I thought I'd do a video in the kitchen today, get a little different look. Uh, <laughs> it was a little while ago, my neighbor started running a chainsaw. He's cutting the trees up over on the property line there. They've all been dead for years, and we agreed to be best to cut them down. So I think he just started working on it at the time I set this up. And the refrigerator is about four feet from me, so uh, and it's running at the moment. So anyway, the title of this uh, video is, uh, let's see, video 145, My First Bear Encounter. I thought of a story this morning, and I was sure I must have shared it, but I looked back through and found I had not. Uh, the story titled First Bear Story was the first one that came to mind. It was not my first bear encounter. My first bear encounter occurred on our hill, on a neighbor's end a few hundred yards from Deer Lake. I was 13 at the time. It was a nice uh, July day, and I was just taking a walk in the woods and uh, looking around. Being 13, I really didn't know much about big game breeding habits. <laughs> I was between the quarry and the little stand of apple trees when I heard a lot of noise that sounded like what I thought was two bucks fighting. Like I said, I didn't know much, especially that the deer rut season was about three months away. I listened to the sound. It appeared to be coming toward the small clearing just over the crest of the hill between me and the lake. I really wanted to see the deer fighting and ran towards the sound. I was running flat out as I entered the north end of the clearing. The clearing was kind of round and was about 50 or 60 feet across. Like I said, it was a small clearing. At the same time I broke into the clearing, a huge black bear ran into the clearing from the south side. Both of us put on the brakes and kind of slid to a stop about uh, three or four feet from each other, face to face. The bear's head was huge. If you make a circle with your arms and overlap your fingers, that would be about right. We looked at each other for a second or two, and the bear made an about face and ran back the way he came. I waited until I could hear, couldn't hear him anymore, and I turned around and beat feet out of there too. I didn't go home the usual way. I just headed straight north until I came to a maze of road. That is the dirt road that intersects with my road at the bottom of the hill. I walked out to my road, which uh, was called Handsome Lake Road back then. I turned and walked south up the hill to the house. Dad was home by then. I went into the house and sat down at the kitchen table. Dad asked, uh, what's wrong with you? You look like you've seen a ghost. <laughs> I know I stuttered a bit when I answered, uh, there's a bear in the woods. <laughs> no one, even the neighbors, had seen a bear since we lived there. He was skeptical. That evening when he came home from, next evening when he came home from work, he apologized for doubting me. In the morning while he was making coffee, he looked out uh, the window facing the woods. Down back about uh, on the property line was an old Bartlett pear tree. Dad said the bear was standing on his hind legs and was picking pears off the tree. I told him how big the bear's head was. He agreed and told me that standing the bear was well over six feet tall. Being our neighbors had four kids, Mom had told them about the bear that evening before. Us kids were always in the woods sometime during the day, and this was late summer. Their dad was also skeptical. The day after our dad saw the bear, the neighbor's dad did too. He was up making some making some breakfast and uh, just happened to notice out the window that their dog was in his coop. He could see the dog, and he was shaking like a leaf. He moved around to get a better look at the yard, and holy smoke! <laughs> There was that big old bear standing alongside that dog coop, holding a dog's dish in his mouth. <laughs> he 
He agreed in my description of, with my description of the bear. He and Dad also agreed that uh, it must have weighed somewhere between three to four hundred pounds. On our hill, four properties intersect. Marcy's meets ours, and Delavan's meets Walter's. Of course, us kids roamed all over. We had permission to go anywhere, as long as we didn't cause any damage. We never did. Old Mr. Delavan was in his 80s back then. He was a kind old guy who farmed with two huge horses. During hunting season, he would be hiking around and would stop in at our house to visit. Mom would make a couple cups of coffee and she and Mr. Delavan would sit on the front porch and chat for a while. At this point in time, I don't remember the breed of his hunting dog, but the dog would just lay in the grass and nap during those few visits. Mr. Delavan hunted with a big double barrel shotgun with barrels about three feet long. He unloaded it and leaned it against the big old white pine in the front yard. He came to visit not long after my bear encounter. He told us that the bear was always on his, uh, out in his back fields and lived in the swamp between his place and Marcy's and Roselle's farm on the other east side. Mr. Delavan had his property heavily posted as a game preserve. He had the signs printed up. It wasn't an official designation through the state. He just didn't want a bunch of city boys running around on his place. <laughs> As it turned out, I was the only one ever given permission to hunt as his property. Come bear season, I grabbed about ten slug shells for Dad's Stevens 410. It is a bolt action with a five-round magazine. I say is because it's on the rack behind me still today. <clears throat> I tested the slug power once. It went right through a six-inch diameter maple. Good enough, I figured. <laughs> the swamp was hard to negotiate for many uprooted trees and snags. There was a terrible hurricane that hit us back in around 1959. I figured that it, that uh, is what toppled most of the trees. Anyway, I found some bear tracks and started following them. Right in the middle of the swamp, I found another small clearing. It was about uh, 30 to 40 feet across, and the grass was all trampled flat. Right in the center of the opening was a maple tree with a diameter of about 10 inches. That maple tree bark was perfectly smooth, higher than I could reach. All over the tree and higher than the worn area were claw marks where the bear dug in his claws and probably did a little stretching and back scratching. I wish I had pictures of some of the things I witnessed, but you'll just have to take my word for it. I never did see that bear again. Mr. Delavan said he had been in the, seen the bear uh, over a 12 year span. No one ever killed a bear in our area back then, so I figured he must have died of old age. Well, we've got a little chainsaw music going now. <laughs> Neighbor's going right to town. Well, that concludes my uh, story of my first actual bear encounter. As usual, folks. I wish everyone all the best.